Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Tuesday Mortgage Coach Trust Engine interview. Um, first of all, this is like a Monday because yesterday was Labor Day. Hopefully everybody did some extreme recovery yesterday. Uh, this is um, part of a special two-month program called the Mortgage Coach 10X Strategy. Uh, I'm, so I'm going to do a 10X interview with Brian McCauley, who is not only an extremely um, successful top producing team leader, he's a mortgage coach that's created thousands of uh, advice experiences for families. So he he brings both uh, best practices to do a lot of volume and best practices to deliver a lot of value and advice. You know, we believe that every borrower can achieve financial freedom, but to do that, they need more than a rate quote. You know, they need advice. So uh, just to kick this off, I want to remind everybody where to go for more information on this. So I'm going to share my screen real quick and then bring Brian into the training arena. Uh, so if you go to mortgagecoach.com forward slash 10x, uh, his picture will be up here soon, along with the other speakers that I'm going to be interviewing this week, the other top or this month. Uh, so... When you go here in a couple of days, um, whoever's coming next, you'll be able to sign up for it. And then when it's green, you can watch it. Uh, I do want to call out that there is a special uh, 10X playlist where not only do we have links to all the, the master classes, but we have links to, to micro classes, micro content uh, that's just easier to consume. Also, we have a, a 10X playbook. So all on this page, and we've updated this three times and a fourth update's coming any day. But this this is just all the resources you need to train on going from loan officer to mortgage coach. And, and then it's also important to note that to learn how to use the product, learn how to use the tech platform, there's online digital training resources. There's also live training every Wednesday at 11 and every Thursday at nine, we're training on product. And for all the newbies out there, nine o'clock Pacific, every Monday, we do um, new guy training for Mortgage Coach. Uh, on this call, I'm also joined by Aaron Miller, uh, success manager here. What's up, Aaron? I have my microphone on mute. Hey, good to see you, Dave. Good to see you. Um, so folks, if you do have questions, where do I learn how to do that? How do I learn that? Put it in chat. And Aaron will jump in and do some, you know, let's just call it technology training. So, yeah. so let's let's bring up Brian McCauley in. So, so Brian, before like this class is like how to create clarity and confidence with yeah. home buyers, but after prepping with you, it sounds like and home sellers and realtors. Like you're you're literally in this market where there's a lot of um, unclarity and lack of confidence. We're going to cover all three of those folks before, before we do that, just, you know, how is this year going for you? What kind of volume do you think you'll end up for the year? And then let's get into strategies. Yeah, man. I appreciate you having me. Uh, you know, it's a wild time in the industry, but that's okay. Tough times don't last tough people do. Uh, and I'm happy to be on this and help everybody as much as I can. Um, I, I agree. I think it's buyers. I think it's sellers. I think it's agents. I even think it's LOs. Uh, there's a much bigger box out there that people need to be aware of. Um, we'll talk about that here in a minute. And so I'm going to do the best I can to fill up that box with as many scenario strategies and conversations as I can for the public. Um, volume's doing good. Last year was 124. We're trending to about 110 this year. Um, so my thing was, you know, hey, if I could do 100 million, uh, I would be happy. And right now we're heading just to be a little bit ahead of that. So I think that's a uh, going to be a pretty strong year and a year that's had a couple of question marks behind it. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. To only be down, what, like less than 10%, looks like about 7 or 8%. Uh, I'll take most, any lender would take that all day long and most any branch would take that all day long. Right. Also, um, you know, I know that in terms of the amount of price exceptions you have, uh, I always look at that as a sales fitness score, but you you rank well among your peers. Any any comments on that? Yeah, I mean, PEs are necessary when they're in necessary. I think the reason that so many people give PEs now are two reasons. One, I think LOs, um, when they don't provide, you know, provide enough value, it's easier for people to shop on price. The advice over price is the way to go. And if you don't have enough advice, aka value, it's easy to get commoditized. Um, I think the second piece of that is really right now, LOs have to know who their clients are and who their clients aren't. 
Um, I think that's important. If you don't know who they are, you don't know who they aren't, meaning like that means everyone's a client. That's just not the case uh, from a PE standpoint. Like, you know, don't make your clients um, clients that are talking to a local credit union. I mean, that's just, you know, they're really hard to beat. Uh, and so in those scenarios, if you're going to lose, lose fast, but you know, the most important thing is providing value to the clients and letting them understand the totality of everything. And I think the more time you spend, the more time you use, uh, MC, the more time you dig in with the clients and show them the big picture, short-term and long-term, the less likely they are to shop. Agreed. And we'll, we'll do a micro class at some point in this conversation around just a reminder. I mean, we kicked off this whole training with Jeremy Forcier the first Thursday of August, you know, focused on that. We did a whole hour of training on that, but yeah. I, I think it's such a big problem, such a challenge. I'm going to, you know, do a three to five minute training at some point. So, so let's get into it. You know, you, cool. you came here with a, how to create confidence, buyers, sellers, realtors, and loan officers. Where, where do you want to start? Uh, I mean, let's start with the bar. I think that if everybody on here, majority of people are LOs, let's start with the bar, right? The buyer. Uh, what are the issues with the buyer? How do you, you know, how do you overcome objections? How do you present value? How do you go big picture? How do you put them in the future? How do, how do you put them in the past? So, um, you know, everybody's running in these scenarios every single day. Um, and so, you know, when it comes to the buyer and the borrower standpoint, most people are concerned because they're like, hey, rates are a little bit too high. I don't love the pay payment. I think I'm going to chill. And I think mo most people at that, at that point go, uh, okay, and they try to find a way to navigate the conversation, but I think that you should already have multiple milestones on the roadmap um, for the borrower so they un understand that, you know, sometimes temporary high rates are a buyer's best friend. Uh, you can give them comparisons. Hey, would you rather go back in time 16 months ago and get a 2% cheaper rate, but overpay, you know, 10% for the house and be upside down? No. Okay, cool. Well, how about summer 2024, if interest rates are a percent plus better, uh, what does that look like to you? Are rates, you know, are, are prices cheaper? No. Is there less ca ca chaos in the street? No. Okay. Well, then, you know, what you save in the rate and the payment, you might lose in the equity in the house. And that's one of the things I'm really focusing on for buyers and agents, too, is saying, like, I think right now is a race to jockey for an equity p p position. And we're going to talk about that, I know, here in a minute, but it's like, uh, okay, if you don't like a 7% rate, what does it need to be? Um, six, and the payment needs to be $200 cheaper. Okay, great. You can either wait till the market gets there organically or strategically get in you know, the seat with your agent, figure out what you need to do to do a buy down, and then that, that way the buyer can have everything that they want right now, which is the house, the price, the rate, and the payment, but you got to be prepared for this stuff. Um, you also got to be able to teach the buyers about the fear component of it, of like, it's not going to stay stagnant, when rates get better, something has to offset. What's going to be the offset? Price of house, demand of house, right? And sometimes that increase will offset this d decrease, except uh, now you've paid 10% more for the house. And so you could have actually made some money on the upswing had you known all this at that time. Love love that, guys. There was some great scripting in that. You, you could get there um, organically or let the market get you there. Or you could get there strategically. I love that. Like, hey, I would prefer to like, let's plan this out and let's get there in the most strategic, proactive way possible. So, so let's let's do, I always like stories and strategies where you, yeah. you know, you tell a story where you know the client had this need, this problem, and this is how I solved it. You you did that, a, you did a great job. It's Cryptopalooza. Uh, by the way, anyone watching this, we're gonna add Brian's. Scriptapalooza um, videos to the 10x training playlist. So um, both of those will be in the 10x training playlist because I think they're just super spot on. Um, but what what's what's a story and a strategy that comes to mind right now that's relevant? Yeah, I mean the the most important ones are all buyers, right? They are especially in Dallas and the Texas market. Inventory is still thin because obviously Texas is growing a ton. Uh, you just don't have enough homes. And so obviously people, when they're finding inventory, you've most of the time got, you know, one or two people that are offering on the house, but even if they like the house, they're just concerned with the rate. They're concerned with the payment. So I literally had one this morning where they're offering, I think it's 1,190,000 and they were coming back and they, they were going to do 25 K off the price. And I said, you know, to, to the client, cl client, let me show you a side by side. And if you go 25 K off the price with the natural rate or, 25k and a 2-1 and show you the side by side. It was like, 
you know? So you always lean with talking to the buyer. You have to assume that you're going to get a concession, okay? If you're going to get a concession, AKA the seller is going to be okay giving you some money, let's figure out exactly where the money is the best use. Because if the seller says, I'm going to give you 20K, they don't care where you put the money. I care where the buyer puts the money because it's the highest and best use of the money. And that's where you have to do a TCA and show them a side by side on, hey, you know, 20K off the roof of, for 30 years doesn't do anything. 20K is a two one buy down, does this. And so it shows them the highest and best use of the money. Um, that's part one that people have the aha. The second part, which we can get into in the back half of this, is the psychology of the sale. I think it's really big. I don't think anyone's talking about that at all. And I think that for those who have been in the industry, you know, 10 or 15 years and you were kind of around during the subprime crash, um, declining equity in a neighborhood can kill wealth. Uh, and it's done by small clicks and small drips. So if a million dollar house goes for 980, that one sells, every buyer drives through the neighborhood and the agent goes, oh, wait, this one was a million, now it's 980. So the next one's gonna be 960, the next one's 940. And over a nine month span, you have killed $50,000 in equity in the area versus if you bought it at a million and did the 20K in concessions and, 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 you know, and cl closing costs and bought down the rate, you would get a higher and better use of the money, save the client a ton on the payments, if they refinance before the buy down is up, they get a temporary refund, but also the sold price shows what the list price was. So if it's listed at a million and it sells at a million, even though you're getting 25K on the back end, the psychology of the sale for the rest of the world says, oh, there's no weakness in this area. I can't go low. And the reason obviously you don't want people to go low is because 12 months from now, people are going to refi. What if they're at 80% LTV and all of a sudden the declining area puts them back at 90? Now that percent and a quarter percent and a half savings has MI. So it's washed out the savings and therefore it's like, oh no, now it's not as strong. Or what about the Daves of the world, the Brian's of the world, it's got kids going to college and they were going to sell their house or they were going to cash out refi. And if they kept the comps up, we could have got 200 K out in cash from net proceeds. Now it's down to 120 because buyer one, buyer two, buyer three, agent one, agent two, agent three, decided to take the concession off the price versus putting it as a closing cost credit. And therefore, not only did it kill the comps, it didn't do anything for the rate. It didn't do anything for the pay payment. And oh, if the buyer refis before the three, two, one, the two, one is up, they don't get any money back. Now that they, they do, and that essentially pays for the refinance in full. So there are multiple checkpoints that people need to be aware of. And this is where I wanted to make sure everybody watching this is, hey, you have to discuss all these things with your clients, but you also have to discuss them with the agent and say, we've got to protect the equity and the wealth in the area. But if everyone just goes haircut 10%, haircut 10% because they don't know any better, um, that is our fault as advisors. And we have to lean out there and get more involved with not only the buyer, but the agent. So, so anyone listening to this, yeah, I just saw some hearts go up. Anyone that, that heard that, do you think, you know, one, that is a conversation that an average loan officer can have with a realtor in a way that's incredibly compelling? I would say no. And, and then two, do you think the mortgage advisor, the mortgage coach, the person that goes through this 10X training can do that better than anyone else? And do you think realtors would like that? Do you think builders would like that? Absolutely, guys. That's where the future in mortgages for the next three to five years is being able to address the needs of the market. And one of them is like, let's not lose values unnecessarily while interest rates are temporarily high. And, and then we're also going to have to be helping um, all the, you know, 63% of every human being with a mortgage in America starts with two or 3%. And you're going to have to, um, cast a picture. You're going to have to future cast. Hey, like they're not going to do it because they're better off today, mm -hmm. you know, because today they're going to go from two to 3% to 7%. They're going to do it because they're better off three years and 10 years from now. Um, and you need to show that to them. You need to future cast that. So Brian, let's, let's do a whole little, you know, show a TCA. Um, yeah. Let's do a little training on that. Uh, depending on how long that takes, um, uh, Aaron, we may have you come up and do a little three to five minute, you know, okay, let me show you how to do what Brian just did. Uh, so be on standby, Aaron. All right. You guys good? We're good. Okay. 
So I've got two here, right? So this is the one that I call the past, present, and future, but this is the cost of waiting. Um, and this cost of waiting piece really gets in a borrower's head and does a small box versus a, a big, big box, meaning uh, buyers only think about, you know, hey, what's the rate and the payment? So what I did is I went in here and said, look, let me kind of explain to you based on projections and data where the future is going that I impact two things really on the conversation. One is if you're looking at numbers and you're a buyer and you want simple rate and payment, if you buy a house in 2023 and you do a $500,000 deal, 10% uh, down, interest rate 699 with a half a point, here's your pay payment, okay? Um, let's say you're like, I don't like that. That's too expensive for me, Brian. Um, I want to wait for a year where rates are projected to be a percent or so better. Um, let's talk about, about, about it then. And I say, cool. But remember, a year from now, right, this house, when rates drop a percent plus, is not going to stay at five. Okay. An average market, when rates are stable, appreciation in good markets is probably 45% a year. When rates are dropping significantly, which is a percent plus, rates are, in, I mean, uh, appreciation is going up by probably eight, nine, 10%. So I showed them, hey, a year from now, if, rate, if the rates are better, you know, uh, by a percent or better, um, the price of that house is going to jump from 500 to 550. So let's drop it down to 599. You can see the difference and the payment. Great. It's a hundred bucks, but you had to pay an extra 10% for, for the house. Well, let's fast forward. Two years from now, rates are at four four nine nine. Same concept, right? But the house has gone up another eight nine per, per, percent, showing to them that yes, the difference of the payment is maybe one hundred fifty two two hundred bucks now versus then. Um, but what I really want to show them is, do you want to be the buyer that buys here and it pays more than you want, but in a year or two, when rates go from here to here? you can refi. It will save you money, but the big pickup is this, from 500 to 600. And it's like, okay, great. Let's say you have to pay an extra $250 for 24 months. So it costs you six grand in extra payments. But two years from now, you've made 100K in equity. So subtract the six grand in extra payments from the 100K that you would have made. That still leaves you net net, 94K up. And this is what I'm trying to show people in creating wealth. Like anybody would say, I'll make that trade. The smart person buys here, sits on it, knowing that it's a long-term play and a strategy to create wealth, understanding that as rates drop, prices go up. So some of the offset of the increase in the price is going to be affected by the bottom line and the rate and the payments. Same logic for 2025. But the intelligent advisor officer says, hey, Buy here. Here's why. This is an ideal, but the big difference is here to here. Don't you want to make 100K on the upswing and compound your wealth even more? Or do you want to buy at 600,000 at the top, save yourself 150, 200 bucks, but this person over here made 100? Split the difference. Make 50. And so this is one of the things that I'm really trying to dig into clients and say, like, if we were in Vegas and I said, you give me 6K, I'll give you 100 in 24 months, will you take that bet? They're going to say yes. But if all they're paying attention to is the rate and the payment, and that's all the conversation is around, then they're going to be stuck in the mud. And this is where us as lenders, we have to show them a year from now, two years from now. And the big important piece of, uh, about this, too, is there's data everywhere about these projections, whether it be Zillow, Redfin, Housing Wire, you name it, everyone's pointing to a version of this close within 12 to 24 months. So you can back it up with data as well. And then people say, oh yeah, I could save myself 250 a month if I wait 24 months, but I'm going to pay 100K more. I don't really like that. And so this is an easy way for people to understand conceptually why to buy, how to buy, and then it has them see through the same lens as we do, which is you're not saving money here. You're losing a lot of equity and a lot of wealth. Smart move is here. So you, you had a really good headline. I can't remember what you said, but like if you were to write a little marketing headline around this, make a little YouTube video around it, what would you call it? You know, something provocative, attention getting. 
Uh, I mean, it's really the, the cost of wedding is a way, and this is a wealth b booster. So, I mean, a, a thumbnail would be, you know, how to create more wealth in a high interest rate environment. Okay, that's good. What was the dollar amount? You you said something else early on. So I said, but, you know, if you're looking at this, it's 100K in equity jump in 24 months, right? Because on average, homes appreciated 4 to 5% in the stable. So as rates drop a percent to 2%. Obviously, the appreciation is going to double eight, nine to ten percent. So, so the trade is: Hey, if we're in Vegas today, and you hand me six grand, and I tell you I'm going to hand you back ninety four in twenty four months, would you take that trade? Yes. The answer is yes. The six grand is the extra money in payments that they're going to pay over twenty four months, versus the equity that they're build by buying now and waiting twenty four months as rates drop. That's the trade. And they're still going to get to refi in a year or two years and go back to the rate and back to the payment that they want. It's just that buying then versus buying now, they lose the upswing on the equity and it kills their wealth. Yeah, this is a great lesson. Everyone tuned into this. You need to know how to create this TCA. You need to know how to have this conversation with buyers, uh, sellers, realtors, builders. Uh, so, Brian, I'm going to have um, Aaron come on real quick and just do like a three to five minute how to create one of these. You, you cool with that? I think it's great. I'll, I'll, also for the LOs, if you don't like it, this one, do past, present, and future. Do 2022, 2023, 2024, except here, do a 499 rate, except show them that they'd be upside down by 10% and be like, you can trade the rate. Now you can't trade the house. Do you want a lower rate and payment? But now you're actually upside down. You're negative. That's not ideal either. Yeah, I love that. And Carmen just came up with an idea. Buy now and have more wealth later. Uh, by the way, community, we welcome all ideas. Let's have a feel free to share other ideas. Also, give us a reaction if you got value from what Brian just shared. Uh, Brian, go ahead and stop sharing your screen real quick. Okay. And uh Aaron, try to keep this under five minutes if you could. Okay. Uh, one sec here while I grab that. <clears throat> okay, great. You can see my screen? We can. Excellent. So I'm going to go to new client. And so we'll start this off. I'm just going to, I'm going to change this to a marketing one. I'm going to call it the cost of waiting. And you know, you would, you would go in and fill out uh, your contact information, property address being TBD. I'm assuming you're going to be buying over where I'm at. And the goals are going to be purchasing a new home. So from here, I would then go to product one. And you could put in, uh, you could call this one buy now. I think which is a lot of times what, what, what I see, or you could like, like what Brian did, he had in, uh, he had in the year. So we could also call this uh, 2023. So on my purchase price for this one, Brian did 500,000. I actually saw that the median home price, isn't that jumped up to like 400,000 now? It's getting up there. Yeah. So if we do like a 10% a down or you can show 20% down, um, I'll do that for, for simplicity. But keeping at your 699 on your interest rate, my term being 360. And then I go on to closing cost drop in a fee template, or uh, if you are an enterprise client, you've got the closing court button or Lodestar, then you can drop in title fees really fast. But I've just got a template of generic closing costs I'm gonna put in there. I'm not charging any points on this, but I'll put in 15 days prepaid interest. And then on my monthly costs, I go in and I drop in just a hundred bucks on the hazard insurance, looking up the tax rate for wherever you are. Uh, our taxes are nice and beefy around here in Texas, but um, for mortgage insurance, not worried about that based on my LTV. I'll put in my escrows down here. Always remember to check this box right here to collect 12 months premium up front and then taxes. So now this one's done. I move on to the next one. And the great thing about this is that it, it actually snowballs. So uh, if you're waiting until 2024, then we can just copy from the first product, make a duplicate. But the story that we're telling is, hey, your home price went up now. You, that house you wanted is now 550. So uh, same down payment, but lower that interest rate a tick uh, down to 599. And there we go. So you're seeing a, a, a 20, let's see, about $10,000 difference there. Everything else should be the same. 
so then the last thing that we would do is just add in another product and do it again. Um, if I'm going from 2024, then I would just hit 2025 and then bring it up again. And I really do like what you say, uh, Brian, about I, to me, the cost of waiting used to feel uh, confusing until I realized the whole key to all of it, which is you're missing out on on uh, equity growth. You know, like you're, you're missing out on a lot that you could be uh, that you could be buying on now and then realize that equity gain later. So I've got uh, I've got my array of of loan amounts that are increasing. I've got my uh, I've got my interest rates that are decreasing. So when I get over here to uh, the short term, and, I could. And, and, where would pause, you dial this in, Dave? Yeah, Any pause. Time? Do do short term of sixty months. Do long term of ten years, and then um, turn the long term chart to net worth. Uh, yeah. That was Tom had asked for that. So, cool. There you go. Yeah, and and if you uh, if 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 you guys want like if, if you haven't click on these information buttons, I think they're they're easy to run past and not not realize they're there. These are training modules that are built in on the analysis page. Really good stuff there. And after you, Dave always loves loves it whenever I mention this. The the um, when you're done making a presentation, you're really proud of. It's generic enough that you want to use it as a template. You don't have to steal it from the borrower that you're making it for. You can hit copy analysis. And this is basically going to duplicate the entire thing that you were just working on. You can either set it to be a new client and then turn that into a template, or you can copy it to the existing client you have. Maybe you want to show them uh, the exact same kind of presentation with just different numbers. So then you would just make a duplicate of it. So you have options there when you hit copy analysis. Um, if there's anything you don't want to show, unhide it here on the presentation page. Uh, but I'll go down here to preview, put a quote date on it, and then generate the share link. And so that link is what we would drop in on everybody. And I'll put that in our chat right now. If I were to add audio and video, uh, then I would be clicking either button there. But I'm going to hit preview and highlight and just show off what I've been doing. All right, guys. So less than five minutes. Um, I probably wouldn't do the net worth here just because you're really showing a roadmap of buying and it's kind of when showing the net worth feature, um, it's showing, you know, as though you did all those things at one time. Uh, great job, Aaron, though. Yeah, uh, Brian, anything you want to call out there? Um, anything you want to make sure people get? Because we're doing a training here. So if you had. Yeah, and I think it's, I mean, I think that's awesome. I think that's really, really good what, what he's doing. I think the, the other pieces, guys, too, when you're showing people all of this stuff, you know, I did 10% 10, 10 down for a reason because there's MI in there. And so if people are talking about savings on the rate and the payment. You have to mind them, hey, you know, MI is involved in this piece. You do it if you buy now, not only will you make a lot of money in the upswing, but you go to refi, that MI is gone because of the equity position that you currently have. And so uh, it reminds them as well, oh, wow, I can save money getting rid of the MI in 12 to 24 months too. If that's a hundred bucks a month, that's a, a drop off. So uh, what you guys have done to set this you know, software up, obviously to be able to go 10 ways to Sunday is great, but there are different lanes that people can, can continue the conversation with uh, depending upon what type of bar you have. Yeah, I, really, really well done. And to me, the big point there guys is delivering advice with price takes five minutes. Like that was, you know, and he could have done it faster if he would have had it set up as a strategy template. It would have been done in two minutes. So great job, Aaron. That was kill. So uh -huh. Brian, let's jump back on stage, um, share another strategy. If there's some key scripting that you want to make sure you deliver, like, like we want to do a couple how to's with the product, but we also want to, you know, get your sales leadership in, in this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So share a screen uh you know kind of one of the things too i mean the same co concepts so this is for an actual client that got under contract the previous week this is a three two one um so you know in this scenario we ba basically showed clients uh hey she was going to offer you know seven hundred thousand dollars uh on the property and they weren't exactly sure which direction to go and so the buy down on this deal cost about 30 grand for a three two one so i did side by, by sides and said hey if you ask for the 30K in a concession, year one, two, and three, here's the bottom line. Here's what it looks like on the savings versus going back to, okay, well, don't offer anything 
you know, towards a concession, just do it off the price of, of the house. You drop 30K off the price showing the bottom line. And it just shows them, you know, respectfully, again, what a dud it is to offer it th that way. Uh, but this is where I actually broke it out specifically and said, doing a three, two, one with 30K and the seller paying for it goes one, two, three, versus if you do it the old school way, it sinks the ship. Plus now the cop is 670, right? It's no longer says 700. And I just say like, what if your neighbor is selling their house for 800 and somebody offers 775? You as the other neighbor go, oh, that kind of kills my equity in my house. It's like, hey, 800 neighbor, take 800, but do 25 as a buy down, show a TC on the side by, by side. It's the same net net, but your house is now stronger in comp, so is theirs, and the buyer needs to understand that piece. The agent piece is really important too because they wanna understand how to pitch it. So Dave, going into your um, question for, for me, so I sent these to, to you guys pr prior to, but I know a, a, lot, a lot of times with LOs, it's hard to really grab the script and be able to have a conversation around it. So what I've done in here is I have put together three scripts that Dave's going to add uh, to the 10x platform that is a buyer script. Okay, so it says, "Hey, when you're when you're an agent or you're a borrower, uh, or I'm sorry, an LO, and you get a borrower that says, uh, you know, interest rates are just too high. I'm going to wait. Everything's too expensive. Instead of saying, okay, what I want is I want people to try to objectively get a number out of them. Hey, I totally understand. I hear that all the time. Just so I can make a note and keep in touch with you as the market improves." What does the rate and the payment need to be for you to feel comfortable continuing the process? Okay. The reason you want to do, do that is because you don't want buyers to be uh, subjective to feelings. You want them to be objective to numbers. So it makes them think, but you also have a metric to say, okay, great. If rates drop a percent, 1%, payment drops 100, 200, I'm going to put you on my list. You're like a stock broker. Hey, the stock's too high. It's nine bucks. I'm going to wait. Okay, cool. What does the stock need to drop to for me to call you back? eight bucks, seven bucks. And so it's an intentional strategic way to have them give you numbers. So one, in the event that you have to actually call them back and wait, you know, a timing thing. But two, if they say, ah, rates need to get a percent better, payment needs to get $200 better. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. I'm going to put you on my list. I promise that I will call you when I can get you that rate and payment. And all they have to do is switch over to the realtor, Aaron. Aaron, Brian McCauley. I just talked to client Dave. He said this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. Here's the deal. If you can find a house at 500,000, Dave will do it at a 6% rate and an X payment. So what I want you to do is go in and make an offer on that property, but you get it with a 2-1 or a 3-2-1. Therefore, the buyer has the rate and the payment and the house and everything that, that they want, okay? So I did some examples down here, which is get them to be objective and get information from them versus a feeling, okay? And then once you have all that, run the numbers for them with your mortgage advisor and say, all right, they want the payment here, not here. So this is what it costs. If they want the payment here, this is what it costs. So you get what they want, figure it out with me or whoever is originating the loan. Then the agent can call back and say, hey, I want to let you know that I've got some awesome news on the rate and the payment goals that we discussed earlier. I just spoke with Dave and I can get you the rate and the payment that you want, blah, 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 blah. It's called a rate buy down strategy. I've done this for a lot of clients. All of this is in there, okay? And then what I did for my partners is I included my YouTube video that talks about the benefits of a buy down. So in case people are a little confused and they wanna go back to it a few times, they can watch it over and over and over. And, and it shows like a TCA with a little, you know, emoji and blah, 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 blah from a program standpoint. So this is the one that I think people uh, should use and give to their agents. So that way they know what to say and overcome the objection as it happens. Um, Dave, we talked about seller obje objections as well. So, hey, man. Hey, hey, real real quick, before you do that, I just yeah. want to remind everybody, if you go to mortgagecoach.com forward slash 10X, and then we have the 10X playbook it's right yep. next to the the piece of micro content, which I think we'll, we'll make some micro content around this too. Um, you could get this. It will be towards the end. They'll be called yeah. uh, Brian McCauley's... Um, what do, you, what do you call them, success? I think it's the, it's the 10X scripting for success, what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. Boom. We got it. By the way, everyone, how do you like this so far? Give us a reaction uh, in chat. Uh, looks like people are digging it. All right. Let's do this one.
this is for the seller piece. So obviously if we're lenders, we don't really mess with the seller, but the agents do. And they say like, you know, I've talked to a lot of people that are cool with selling their house, but there's just no inventory out there. And these, you know, owners have 3% rates, 4% rates, five, and, you know, things are just too high for them to actually want to step out and sell. So when they talk to somebody, you know, an agent, and they say, you know, I want to sell my house and get a new one, but I've got a, such a great rate on my mortgage. It's hard to walk away. Yada, yada, yada. The rates are too, too high. I, I'm going to wait. Okay. So the agent says, I totally understand. I hear that all the time. Did you know that you can still get an interest rate in the fours and the fives today? It's just a matter of who pays for the fee for it to get, get that low. I'm curious, would you cons consider selling and buying if you could get a rate of the fours or even the fives? Now you program the sellers to say, I didn't know that you can get a rate in the fours today. You can. Let me show you how. So this is the other component of the script. This happens all the time. And most of the time, I can get the seller to pay the fee which is much more competitive than the current rates. However, worst case scenario, you're, you're playing with house money, meaning you've got all this trampoline equity because of COVID. So worst case, if you've got hundred K, take a little piece of your equity on the proceeds, 10, 10%, and you pay the fee to get the rate bought down in the fours and the fives. And this way you don't have to wait another 12 to 18 months for the market to lower, because obviously it'll do it on its own. But the downside with that is it's gonna push the prices way up and make you harder for you to get a home on the flip side. And so again, this is a long stretch piece on what you can give to your agents on what to say to sellers that want to sell that have a competitive rate in the threes and the fours, getting them off the fence, thinking that, oh, I've got 4% rates are at seven, too big, big of a gap. Say, did you know people can still get rates in the fours right now? I didn't. Let me tell you how. And so it gets them on the other side. And then it's a matter of great sell your house at max equity. Hopefully I can get the seller to pay for the buy down. If not, worst case scenario, take some of that house money that you got during the COVID bounce, carve out 10%, get the house that you want right now with the price that you want, buy down the interest rate and you're set. Because if you wait 12 to 18 months, yes, the organic natural rate will come down and the payment will come down with it. The downside is that house is gonna bounce 10%. And so now the savings from the rate and the payment are not going to be as substantial. Boom, That's another killer script. Um, also, Tim Brahim uh, pushed a video into our community earlier um, this year. It was called uh, Strategies and Scripts to Help Realtors Get Listings. I'm yeah. going to, I just added that as a piece of micro content to our um, uh, 10x uh, sales training playbook. So check that yeah. out. And we'll put a link down below. But here's my message, guys. What he just showed you, these are these are some of the biggest, no, the biggest problems realtors have. Like, like their biggest problem is not closing a loan on time right now. Their biggest right. problem is getting listings and getting buyers under contracts. And everything, right. all these scripts that Brian's going through, all these strategies that are part of this 10X program are addressing the single biggest problems in the market right now. So um, yep. I'm loving it, brother. Last one is the lack of inventory. Hey, you know, I'm a buyer, I understand, you know, rates are okay, whatever, but I've been waiting a long time to get an actual deal. But the problem is, Brian, you know, uh, or the problem is, Dave, because you, you, you're the agent, you know, the lack of inventory, um, they like the house, but they don't love the house. I get, get this a lot. So on the scale of one to 10, everybody wants an eight. The problem is the eights are really expensive. Everybody wants to get after them. You find yourself in a multiple situation. So what, what you want to say is, look, I understand inventory isn't great, but it's thin. Everyone wants an eight. The problem is the eights are really expensive and everyone wants it. So here's the solution, right? Buyers are finding sixes everywhere. They don't love it, but they like it. So the question is, as an agent, if I find you a six and I can get a deal on it in order for you to like it enough and make an offer and move it to a seven, what would you want on the deal? Okay, do you want the concession off the price? Do you want super low rate and payment? Or do you want a cosmetic upgrade for things like carpet, paint, and tile? It moves them from a six, not to an eight, but from a six to a seven. And what you have to say is, I've got a lot of Daves out there. Everybody wants an eight, but the aces are pricey and they're hard to come by. So what I've been doing for everybody is going from a six that you're kind of like, eh, I like it, I don't love it. Okay, cool. What would move you from a six to, to a seven? Would it be 20K off the price? Would it be super low rate in payment? Or how about a facelift for 20K? Carpet, paint, tile, and turf to move from a six to a seven. Now they're in the mind of, well, okay, cool. If I can get A, B, or C, 
right? I might like it enough to put an offer, moving it from a six to a seven. And this is depending upon the person, you give them a three option close. Some people will want the haircut off the price. I don't like it, but that may be what it is to get them there. Second one is, hey, why don't we get a three, two, one? Dirt cheap payments for 24 months until the market corrects itself. Or why don't we throw some TLC on it? Carpet, paint, tile, turf in the backyard, landscaping, all good, all good. But that's the option that every LO in here can give these scripts to their agents. So when they run into this and buyers say this all the time, say to move it from a six to a seven, it's one of these three, which one do you want? Apples, oranges, or bananas? And you make the evidence of success of everybody that finds sixes, they don't love them, but they like them. But the move it from like to kind of love, it's one of the three, which is it for you. And then you can give them an example here or a combination. How about a one zero plus carpet and paint, a hybrid, you know? And so the component here is you guys are seeing this program the client to see the deal and the options and why it's best and then put them in the future as well. 12 months from now, this house won't be 400K and I can't get you a deal. It'll be 420, you'll have to pay full price and you won't get A, B or C. Do you understand? Yes, okay, cool. And then leave it up to the agent and the buyer to obviously structure it. So those are the three that everyone's running into that I probably talk about and around and through 75% of the time. And I really do these scripts plus really deep TCAs. And then of course I have a YouTube channel and I throw my YouTube channel in there as a after the fact. So, hey, we talked about this. We talked talk about this. I'm gonna send you a, a recap and then a link to my YouTube channel on apples, oranges, or bananas. Watch it, you'll really like it. So that way they have it, but also when they're at home at night, they can watch it three or four times, conceptually get it. But it also helps the agent, you know, score. Agents can't score as well as us because they're not as good in the vernacular, but also in the numbers. And so we have to pitch it to the agents, give it to them in writing, train them, and then give them some type of video, YouTube or whatever to connect the dot. And then you need to be the person that really, the, you know, closes the deal and also gives them some type of optic in conjunction with the T TCA. So the buyers go, oh, now I get it. And this is my sauce until the market gets to where it corrects itself. And then after that, I will start changing my scripts again, which is you're not out of time yet, but the hourglass is shrinking. And then of course, a year from now, when everything's nutty and rates are percent plus better after the election, it's gonna be a whole different deal. But the problem is you want everybody to win big from now until then, these scripts, TCA's video, best shot. All right, guys. So let Brian know what you thought. Give him a reaction from everything you just heard. Um, looks like you're getting a lot of hearts, brother. I, I thought that was huge. Uh, so let's, in this last 15 minutes we have, I think turning your advice into um, a tool to recruit realtors, a tool to get more referrals from realtors, I think it's pretty intuitively obvious that what you did did that. Um, you know, one of the one of the clips I'm playing a lot, and uh, I think I've played it almost in every training in this 10x program. But I'm going to play it because it's so important, and then I want to get your version of this. So this is a little 50 second clip from um, a 50 million dollar producer in Denver. Uh, she's in the Denver market. Her name's Shay Jenkins. Um, and, and by the way, last year was her second year in the mortgage oh. business and she did 53 million. So, and she's on track having her third year over 50 million. Uh, nice. so check out what she's doing and then let's talk about how you do this, Brian, cause I know you already do this. I was going after this huge, 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 one of the top agents in Denver. And I had been trying for, since I was an assistant, I had been trying to get this person. And finally the poor girl gave me like, you know, gave me a break and was like, Lord, like, here you go, take this one lead. Um, and I took the lead and I did a mortgage coach. And I was just like, you know what, why not? I'm gonna CC the agent on here. And then that's when the agent picked up the call and she's like, are you serious? this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And I'm like, what mortgage coach? And I was like, you're the top agent. You've never seen this before. And she's like, absolutely not. She's like, this is amazing. She's like, would you be able to do this with all my buyers? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, that's so cool. And again, in her head, I think she was thinking I'm up all night creating this massive presentation with all these numbers and graphs. And, um, she, I got her business and she's one of my top agents now.
So I think like that's the magic, you know, right? And by the way, have you ever had that happen to you before where an agent is just like, oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah, I mean, the two things for all the LOs watching that I do is I do a ton of TCAs and I've done to do a ton of YouTube videos about, about this stuff as well to add a little bit of life to, to it. Um, I make sure that myself and our team does what's called a proactive tattletale. I don't even wait for the agent to ask to be on it. Every TCA that we send, every structure, every YouTube video, anything that goes out to the client, I remind the, the team you tattletale because I want the agent to see how professional we are, how we structure these deals, how we help buyers understand where the highest and best use of the money is, how to see the market, the details and all of that. So it is a hard rule in our office and with our team, which is new agent, existing agent, past client, current, any TCA, any YouTube video that goes out, agent is included on every single one, every single time from a learning tool standpoint, from a strategy standpoint, because again, the more I can educate the realtor and help them, the better. But at the end of the day, we're going to be the ones that have the muscle behind the movement from the borrower. Um, I make sure that we include them on everything and they are wowed big time. And the truth of the matter is, too, sometimes, you know, the bars can't use us. They go somewhere else. And so I also want the agents to understand the gap, which is if they're using Bob Smith at one, two, three, and they're a fee sheet and they're an LE, you know, the agent starts, starts to see like, man, these people are playing in the 90s. We're playing in 2030 and that's what you want. And that's the separation click by click over time. So what she's talking about is spot on. Uh, we just, for lack of a better term, we barf this stuff on them in a good way because you set up such an excellent tool that it's an easy gap separation for the mortgage advisor. Um, but also we want the agents to be able to see it, learn it and know it in any time that they're not getting it. Um, from somebody, somebody else, it's a subconscious a reminder on look at what we're doing, but also it's a little cheat, cheat, cheat for them. I mean, anybody ever sitting around on the Saturday and the agent go, hey, we're going to make an offer. I'm just curious, uh, what's the rate and what's the closing cost? I'm going to make an offer on the property. Do they can click on the TCA from a micro piece and click on closing costs, 9,400 rate, 7%. It fills in the gap on that conversation that the agent would normally call you on a Saturday or after hours. And so if you're a producer or you're becoming a big pr producer, if you've got 10 offers going out every weekend and those agents would have called you five times, each one of those deals is 10 minutes and you're with your daughter, with your spouse doing whatever, you no longer have to have that call one, but two, um, the value piece on the TCAs separates it. And you can politely ask, are your other lenders sending you this? Are they showing your clients the best strategies? Are they explaining to them why now's a better time than a year from now and a 12 months prior to? And the answer is going to be no, 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 no. And you just say, okay, cool. How does that make you feel? Why do you think they're, they're, they're not? And it starts to solidify and put you in a position of an advice over price component. And by showing that over and over and over, um, eventually it puts you to first place in, in the race. So I want to make sure we wrote down that question. Are your other lenders showing advice like this mortgage coach video or this, you know, cost yeah. of meeting. And then right. by the way, and then stop, like let them talk and have a conversation around that. Uh, by the way, we're going to make a couple I mean, I, that was a video um, that we want to put into it about 49 minutes into this conversation. So um, innovation team, let's make sure we get that in there. I do want to do a um, a training on how to reduce and win with rate shoppers. And I want to get your voice into this, Brian. So one of the things that we, we talk about a lot and we teach is that it is 2023 and speed to lead is no longer enough. Uh, you know, my entire career, that was the single most important principle to conversion and success. And, and we say, you know, it's it's elevated now. It's speed to need. Who can get to the need of the consumer first and create clarity and confidence first, like even, even anticipate the needs. So um, this, this is how most loan officers quote rates. And, and guys, this is how, why most loan officers uh, price exceptions are double right now than what they typically are. I know that because I, we have hundreds of lenders that are clients and it is not uncommon that whatever um, price exceptions were last year, um, they're double that now. 
you know, so, so this is, this is how a mortgage coach delivers price with advice. And Brian gave you multiple examples of where he's like, Hey, here's one strategy. Here's a, here's an affordability strategy to lower your payment. And Oh, you can refinance in the future and put in whatever that rate might be in the future. Um, so first of all, date the rate, marry the house. I think Brian, a lot of what he taught covered this, and this will reduce price exceptions. But Brian, I, I'm right when I say this, you're still going to have some people grind you. Like you may get less of them, but you're still going to have some grinding, right, Brian? You're always going to have grinding. I mean, no, no matter what, rate shoppers are part of the deal. Just bake it into your mentality and understand like, hey, you know, rate shoppers are part of it. But also like it's not their fault. Borrowers don't really know what else to ask for. What else are they going to ask for? Right. That's just kind of like the common thread out there. And so it's not their fault. Our our job is to overcome that and say, sure, happy to show you some competitive rates. Assuming the terms are competitive. What else is important to you? Financial goals, kids, saving money, wealth investments have a counter objection and a reframe to get off of that because they don't know really what to ask. That's a way that they're programmed from society. So when they say it, don't be caught off guard and offended. Just say, sure, I understand. I'm going to give you some competitive terms. The good news is I'm going to give you two or three options. And when we get there, you get to choose and we'll go over the pros and the cons on each. And that could be points, no points somewhere in the middle. Hey, don't do 5% down or don't do 10% down. Do 5% down, pay off your credit card instead. Therefore, your total bottom line is better, A, B, and C, but you got to get them off that thought. So have a counter objection to them and say, of course, I'm going to send you some competitive options. When we get there, you'll get to choose. We'll have A, B, and C, and we'll talk about the pros and the cons. And based on what's most important to you, we'll select that. And it's a very easy way to get them down, make a note, and then move on to, to the next. But again, you know, 20% of people are going to rate shop, but everyone knows they're most likely going to be a paper people, perfect credit, 20% down. But this goes back to the LO of advice over price, value over rate, but also knowing your audience. There are just some people that will drive a mile across town to save 10 cents on Gatorade. That's not our people. Do your best, but those aren't you, you, your people. If you get people in, they need advice over price. You have to be able to get to the spot where Dave is showing to show them the value. It's like, I want to go on a date for an hour because I can show my value in an hour. I can't go on a date for 10 seconds and show my value. It's just not there. So I also have to make sure that my audience will let me get on a date for an hour. And at the end of it, I feel like I've done a good, good job. Love it. So, so guys, you have an option. You could deliver this. Now you, one, are going to get rate shot more often. And two, you're not going to be in the position to, to make the move to that I'm going to show you. So mortgage coach goes here. And then when a mortgage coach gets rate shopped, they, they've got a strategic conversation to have. They can show like, hey, here's my loan. Here's the competition. Then let's just say it's a half a point better in interest rate. And now you can show, well, hey, that what's that monthly? And what's that over the course of a year? And what's that over the course of two years? And now you've dollarized it. So one, yeah. what, what I'm hearing in the marketplace, if the cost is less than $2,000 in a year, you're keeping the loan. You're not even doing a price exception. Like right. if you aren't delivering an experience to your consumer and they're committed to you that's not worth 2000 then you need to upgrade the experience that you're giving. Now, yeah. if it's more than 2000 and you need to do a price exception, now instead of doing it based off of an eighth or a quarter, which is a lot of basis points. That's an expensive exception. You could mm -hmm. do it based on dollars, like, oh, $5, $500 credit, $1,000 credit. So it all comes down to, if you want to win in this market and you want to be the most profitable, highest conversion, we know that loan officers that don't do this, they deliver this, they're yeah. anywhere from six to 65 basis points more profitable, and they have a 10% better conversion. Uh, Brian, anything you want to kind of wrap around this? We're like right at the five minute mark. I think we just made a five minute um, video on how to win with rate shoppers. But anything you want to add to that? Any scripting you want to add? I just encourage everybody to lean in this 10x. I mean, it's got every tool that you need to succeed and pu push through. I mean, you guys have done an awesome job, whether it's TCAs, any of the scripts that I've thrown into the uh, and, and to the mix, um, you know, even weaving in the psychology of the sale, declining market, all of these things matter. It's what we run into 80% of the time. So it's our job to, you know, 
practice and learn from each other, uh, you know, obviously pour into, but pull from Dave's gr gr group as well, because it's all here. It's just a matter of learning and putting it into play. I think what, once you've got is great. Um, happy to be a part of it and happy to share more with anybody after this that needs anything that's off to topic. But that's why I like the psychology of, this, of, of the sale, killing the equity, reduces the wealth growth, causes issue with refis later, causes it with cash outs. These are other things that you can have in the tool belt if and when those conversations start to pop. Love, love, love this, man. So we're, uh, any questions that people want to put last minute, put them in chat. Uh, please, if you're a manager on this, you know, I'm doing this as a, a sales tool, like tedx.com forward slash tedx or mortgagecoach.com forward slash tedx. Um, one, one script I want to pull from the Jeremy Forcier interview real quick. When, when he goes and he's getting rate shopped where someone, you know, like, Hey, I've got another lender that's going to do X. He, he always goes, Oh, um, would you forward me that? you know, that total cost analysis showing all your options with the video that they did for you. So, oh, they didn't do that for you. They didn't show you transparency options, cost over time. Oh, well, what do they do? Just give you a fee worksheet or something. And then he puts that in his TCA. So just a little subtle uh, tactic and strategy um, to help folks out. So Brian, we got three minutes left. Yeah. If there was one book, that, you know, really made the most impact for you um, this year, you know, or a book that you think every loan officer should read right now, what would it be? Um, I think I'm going to go with fanatical prospecting. I think that's the best right now. LOs are down on their prospecting. They need to 3X their thought process, 3X what, what, what they're doing. That needs to be forward facing because obviously, you know, TCAs are great. Scripts are great. Everything is great. But if you ain't got nobody to talk to, you ain't got nobody to show strategies to, it drive, dries up quick. So I think fanatical prospecting should be front and center for everybody. Look yeah. at them. So get, get it, guys. Well, I, I entered Shayla, give, interviewed Shayla last Tuesday, and, you know, she's doubling down on this book right now. Uh, and I can't emphasize enough, like the two things that every successful, thriving originator that's winning in this market and positioning them for, for the future they are fanatically prospecting. When I interviewed Shot Benoshi, the number one loan officer in the country yeah. in May, he said, I've already met with and talked to more realtors this year than any year in my career. Like guys, you got to get out and prospect. And then you, you need to be more than a loan officer. You need to be an advisor. Um, hopefully everybody is getting value from this. Uh, any last words of wisdom before we wrap it? We got a minute left. Any like little one minute nuggets? Stay close to Dave and the team. Uh, they got an edge on everybody. I just leaned in this group a ton to figure out, you know, who's the best for you, well, whether it becomes scripting, TCAs, whatever. Anybody that wants to connect with me, Dallas, Mortgage Man, All Sites. YouTube channel's great for the LOs out there that repeat themselves a ton of time a day and have a ton of valuable things to say. If you can make a long form video and send that to clients and partners as well, that seemed for me to compound the message. But also if you have a team, sometimes your LOAs may not be able to pitch it as well as you, and you can give that to them to help support the team and the growth. But Dave, you guys have been amazing. I'm happy to be a part of it, dude. I could not run without it. Uh, you know, just excited about the future and excited to help you guys and anybody else that needs it. Brian, you're a, you're an awesome innovator. You're an awesome leader. Thank you for everything you do in this broad trust engine mortgage coach community. Thank you for everything you do at Fairway to help us have the amazing partnership we do at Fairway. So brother, thank you very much. Hopefully Appreciate everybody it, got value. Uh, give us a little reaction on your way out the door. If you are watching this in our YouTube channel and you have a question, put it down below. Uh, we'll get to it. And if there was some you know, there was a clip, you know, we want to do a better job of taking these, you know, one hour long form videos and turning them into two minute, three minute, five minute lessons. So if there's something you want us to edit from today's call and put it in the playlist, let us know. Cool. So, take care, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Brian.